Blood Diamond, 2006. Set against the backdrop of the Sierra Leone Civil War in 1999, the movie depicts a nation in turmoil as government soldiers clash with rebel forces. The narrative highlights the grim realities of the conflict, such as the rebels' brutal practice of amputating people's hands to obstruct their participation in upcoming elections. The story unfolds with the abduction of Solomon Vandy, played by Jimin Hunsu, a Min fisherman, by the Revolutionary United Front RUF, rebels during their invasion of the small Sierra Leonean village of Shinch. Separated from his family, Solomon becomes an enslaved laborer in the diamond fields under the command of Captain Poison, portrayed by David Harewood. Meanwhile, Solomon Sundia is forcibly recruited into the rebel forces, undergoing brainwashing that transforms him into a remorseless killer. The RUF exploits the diamonds from the fields to finance their war, frequently trading them directly for weapons. While toiling as a forced laborer in the RUF diamond fields, Solomon stumbles upon a sizable diamond with a rare pink hue. Shortly before government troops launch an assault, Captain Poison notices Solomon concealing the precious stone. However, in the midst of the attack, Captain Poison is injured, preventing him from obtaining the diamond. Both he and Solomon are subsequently captured and taken to prison in Freetown, the capital of Sierra Leone. Danny Archer, Leonardo DiCaprio, an Anglo ex-mercenary from Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, trades arms for diamonds with an RUF commander. He is imprisoned after being caught smuggling the diamonds into neighboring Liberia, and the diamonds are confiscated. He had been transporting the diamonds to a South African mercenary named Colonel Cutsey, Arnold Voslo, who was in turn employed by South African Diamond Company executive Van de Kapp, Marius Weyers, and his deputy Simmons, Michael Sheen. Cutsey is Archer's former commander in 32 Battalion, the most decorated unit of the South African border war, made up of Angolan and Rhodesian soldiers and white South African officers. Archer is desperate for a way to repay Colonel Cutsey for the diamonds taken from him when he was arrested and thrown in jail, in the same prison as the fishermen. While in prison, he overhears Captain Poison ranting to Solomon about the discovery of the large diamond and decides to hunt down the stone. He arranges for Solomon's release from prison and offers to help him find his family in exchange for the diamond. Archer and Solomon find their way to Maddie Bowen, Jennifer Connolly, an American journalist, who helps Solomon track down his family. Bowen soon learns that Archer is using Solomon to find his diamond and will eventually steal it for himself to leave Africa forever. Bowen, a humanitarian, refuses to help Archer unless he can tell her about the diamond market to stop the flow of blood diamonds out of Africa, cutting off funding for civil war and ending a mass revolution. Archer gives Bowen the information that she wants and gets access to use the press convoy to travel to Kono to find the diamond. The convoy is attacked and Archer, Solomon and Bowen escape and find their way to the South African mercenary force under Colonel Cutsey. There they learn of the attack force preparing to retake Sierra Leone, a reference to the actual 1995 hiring of South African security firm executive outcomes by the provisional government of Sierra Leone. The two men leave the camp on foot while Bowen boards a plane carrying foreigners out of the conflict zone. After an arduous overnight trek, the men reach the mining camp in a river valley, still under RUF control, where Solomon discovered and buried the large diamond. Here, Solomon is painfully reunited with his son Dia, who refuses to acknowledge him because he has been brainwashed by the rebels. Solomon is also reunited with Captain Poison, who orders him to find the diamond, but the South African mercenary force, also after the diamond. Dispatches the RUF rebels in a massive airstrike which kills many of the RUF rebels and some of the miners. Amidst the Choas, Solomon suffers from temporary insanity and kills poison with a shovel. Through a deal with Archer, Colonel Cutsey forces Solomon to retrieve the stone. In a desperate battle, Archer kills Cutsey and the other two soldiers with him after realizing that they would have killed both Archer and Solomon upon locating the diamond. At this point Dia holds Archer and Solomon at gunpoint with a pistol, but Solomon manages to convince him to side with them. As Archer overturns a body to take equipment he realizes he has been shot, but keeps this to himself. Having arranged in advance for a plane to pick him up, he radios to the pilot, Benjamin Capenay Basil Wallace, who demands that Archer dump Solomon in diameter slowly and painfully the group makes its way from the valley towards an airstrip atop a nearby ridge. Archer collapses, unable to climb, 
and Solomon carries him a little ways before Archer has him put him down. He tells Solomon to take Dia home, knowing that he is dying, and gives them the diamond. Archer holds off the soldiers chasing them while Solomon and Dia flee, and then makes a final phone call to Bowen, asking her to help Solomon as a last favor before looking out over the beautiful landscape of Africa once more and dying peacefully. With the help of Bowen, Solomon trades the diamond to Simmons for a large sum of money in the reunification of his family, making the exchange as Solomon's wife and children deplane from a Learjet at a London airport. Bowen, who secretly photographs the deal, later publishes a magazine piece exposing the trade in conflict or blood diamonds. The film ends with Solomon smiling at the photograph Maddie took of Archer earlier, now published in her magazine along with the complete story of their journey before addressing a conference on blood diamonds in Kimberley, South Africa, describing his experiences. This refers to an actual meeting that took place in Kimberley in 2000 and led to the Kimberley Process Certification Scheme, which seeks to certify the origin of diamonds in order to curb the trade in conflict diamonds. At the encampment, Archer, seeing they are heavily outnumbered, calls Cutsy's army via satellite phone to request an airstrike. Vandy, Desperate to find his son, sneaks into the encampment and locates Dia. Due to Dia's brainwashing, he refuses to acknowledge his father. Vandy is captured but escapes when Cutsy's army arrives. Vandy finds and kills Captain Poison as the mercenaries overwhelm the RUF defenders. Cutsy takes Dia hostage and forces Vandy to produce the diamond, but Archer kills Cutsy after realizing the colonel will eventually kill them both. Dia briefly holds the pair at gunpoint but Vandy is able to talk him down by reminding him of who he was. Pursued by vengeful mercenaries, Archer is mortally wounded. He entrusts the stone to Vandy, telling him to take it for his family. Vandy and his son rendezvous with Archer's pilot, who flies them to safety while Archer makes a final phone call to Bowen in Cape Town. Archer asks Bowen to assist Vandy and his family, and gives permission for Maddie to finish her article before dying. Vandy and Bowen meet in London, where they execute an undercover operation to expose the Van de Cap operation's dirty dealings. Vandy exchanges the pink diamond for two million pounds and a reunion with his entire family. Bowen publishes her expose on the diamond trade and Van de Cap's criminal actions. Later, Vandy appears as a guest speaker at a conference on blood diamonds in Kimberley, where he is met with a standing ovation. I'll